iOS 13 is launching in just, well, a day. Yes, tomorrow is June the 3rd, uh, when Apple will be having their WWC 2019 event, full video by the way on that here, with the seven things that you can expect. And one of those things is actually iOS 13. So here's everything that we know so far about iOS 13, one of the biggest updates yet to come to the iPhone, the iPad, and of course, that iPod Touch. And speaking of that iPod Touch, we're actually doing a giveaway of the brand new iPod Touch 7th generation. So if you want to win one, uh, just follow on Instagram at Zenoff Tech and then leave a comment on this post, uh, the one with the renders of the iPod Touch 7th gen. And yeah, let me know which one do you want to win and, and why. And I'll be announcing the winner on Instagram via the MN story on July the 1st. Okay, so here are the three chapters that I have for this video. So design changes, uh, functionality changes, and finally the supported devices that iOS 13 will be able to run on. And all of this is a big compilation that I've made based on the leaks, the reports, and the rumors uh, that we've had over the past year on iOS 13. And most of these are coming from Bloomberg's Mark Gurman, 9to5Mac, Mac Rumors, and developer Gilherme Rambo, and also uh, Steve Throdman Smith. So yeah, make sure you give all of them a follow. I've included the links below. Okay, so now when it comes to design changes, the most noticeable one would be the dark mode. This was this was so overhyped and teased, um, and Apple will finally be launching it on iOS this year. So we got it on the Mac last year in Mac was Mojave in 2018. Uh, I'm really not sure why they released it on Mac first, not on iOS, since, you know, on iOS we have iPhones with OLED displays that can take full advantage of a dark mode, a true dark mode. Um, yeah, but... We got it on the Mac first, and it's finally coming to iOS in 2019. Mark Gurman reports that its dark mode would be a black and gray heavy interface optimized for viewing at night. Uh, and a few older reports have said that Apple would actually be launching not one, but two dark modes. So one of them similar to how it looks on the Mac with that dark gray, and then another one that would be the true black, which is actually the one that I care about the most because this one would also improve battery life on all that iPhones. So yeah, this is the big one that I really want to see. Now, we've also had some older reports uh, that claimed that Apple would actually be bringing a brand new design to iOS with iOS 13. Now, unfortunately, uh, the most recent leaks do not seem to point towards this at all, at least not on the iPhone. And developer Guilherme Rambo has actually posted some images of iOS 13. So these are not renders, but actual pictures of how iOS 13 would look like. And in this one with a home screen, well, aside from the darker dock, it looks pretty much identical to iOS 12, even, yeah, even the wallpaper. Yeah, I mean, Apple will most likely release a new wallpaper uh, with iOS 13, but in the second image, we have the music app, which, okay, this one looks amazing. So we have that perfect true black mode uh, for the background with red and white accents. And what I really like about this one is that it has their transparent dark menu on the bottom, which actually resembles the transparency on Mac OS with dark mode enabled. And it just looks amazing uh, with its true black uh, for the background. Yeah, it looks it looks pretty good. Also, it looks so much better than what Smart Invert currently does to the music app in iOS 12. And then the third leaked image shows the screenshots menu. And here we can again see that bottom menu that transparent. Uh, and it seems like the icons have also been redesigned as well. The brushes all got an updated look uh, and a much more modern one. So I do like this a lot, but unfortunately, yeah, this seems to be it. So yeah, no on-screen widgets like many users have been requesting for years, no redesigned home screen, so yeah, the exact same basis as we got with a first-gen iPhone in 2007, and overall, it's just a dark mode, you know, with a darker <laughs> dock, and, um, and that's it, that's iOS 13. At least iOS 13 when it comes to the design of the iPhone. Now, we have seen some reports, including one from our Gurman, uh, that say that the iPad would actually be getting some even bigger design changes. I mean, you know, some big design changes, actually, uh, when it comes to the home screen. So tweaks to better utilize the screen space. I'm not fully sure what this means as of yet, but yeah, I'm still keeping my fingers crossed for the ability to place icons anywhere we want on a home screen. And yes, my favorite, on-screen widgets, which would be extremely useful to have, especially on a larger display, such as, you know, on an iPad. And speaking of the iPad, developer Guilherme Rambo has posted two screenshots here as well. So the first one shows the pencil tray that we've seen on the iPhone's uh, dark mode menu. Uh, and here on the iPad, it seems to have been redesigned as well. So everything looks cleaner. The ruler is finally back. I'm not sure why they removed it in the first place. But yeah, it's back, and I really do like this look a lot. It's so much cleaner and nicer than the one that we have now. And then a second screenshot shows the Reminders app next to the calendar. 
And yes, the Reminders apps has been redesigned uh, with categories such as today, scheduled, all, and flagged. So yeah, apparently Apple would be redesigning a lot of the first party apps to give them a more refined look, so to say. Uh, messages, for example, will be getting a WhatsApp style feature, uh, which would allow you to have your profile picture and your name displayed to other users when they literally just search for a name. Uh, the mail app would be getting some updates, the ability to organize messages into searchable categories like marketing, uh, purchases, travel, uh, not so important and more, which is, you know, extremely useful to have. Like Apple Mail was or still is one of the only main clients that still lack this. There's going to be a brand new Find My iPhone app, uh, which could be renamed to just Find My. And this will unify Find My iPhone and Find My Friends into a single app. Maps will include new features that would easily allow you to navigate to frequent locations, and they would also be grouped more efficiently. Books will include a new progress tracker and a reward system. Then the Home app would be redesigned as well, and it will integrate the ability to uh, see security feeds right in the app instead of you know ha having to uh, uh, 3D touch. Then the Health app would also be redesigned, uh, and a new hearing menu would be introduced, where you would be able to measure how loud you play music on your headphones or the volume of the ambient noise around you. And yes, finally, that annoying volume slider would be redesigned so that, you know, it doesn't block half of the screen uh, when you're changing the volume like, like it does now. Okay, so those seem to be all the design changes of iOS 13. So what about, you know, functionality changes? Well, get ready because there's quite a lot of them and I'll start with the big ones. Okay, so the iPad is getting a big one and that's mouse support, finally. So you'll be able to use your mouse um, on your iPad, so the iPad will become closer to your Mac, kind of. Apparently only the iPad Pro will be able to do this and only by USB, so not Bluetooth. I really hope that Apple fixes this in the final release of iOS 13 and we get full Bluetooth mouse support on all the iPads. And if you have a Mac with Mac OS 10.15, you would also be able to use your iPad with iOS 13 uh, as a secondary display for your Mac without the need to download any third-party apps. So this is really awesome. And then the keyboard will also be getting some improvements with swipe gestures. This is a pretty odd one. But yeah, swipe gesture is just like SwiftKey, but natively. Honestly, what I want to see the most in terms of the keyboard is haptic feedback support like we have on many an Android smartphones today, like on OnePlus 7 Pro, for example, that's the best typing experience I've ever seen on a smartphone. Now, fun fact and pro tip, you can actually get this on iOS by using the Google keyboard and enabling haptic feedback in, in the settings for the keyboard. So you can actually do it. Okay, next up, font management. Uh, would be improved in iOS with a new options menu in the settings just for managing fonts. Uh, so yeah, this would be very similar to the font book on the Mac where you can install your own fonts and use them in Photoshop and so on. So yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to this. And then yes, the Files app would be improved uh, with not just a redesign, but also better third-party support for services such as Microsoft's OnDrive, Google Drive, and Dropbox. Siri will be getting some big improvements as well when it comes to voice recognition and follow-up replies, uh, both of which are heavily needed since Siri is so, so far behind uh, the Google Assistant at this point. And keep in mind that Siri was actually the the first built-in advanced voice assistant on a smartphone uh, in 2011 with the iPhone 4S. Then Siri will finally load up a desktop version by default instead of having to load the mobile one on the iPads uh, that it usually loads now. So yeah, there are a ton of changes like this coming to iOS 13. But probably the biggest one in terms of functionality would be the ability to use multiple instances of the same app on the iPad. So rather than having two or three apps max running at the same time side by side on the iPad like we have now, uh, you would be able to have multiple windows of the same app. And UI designer Daniel Korpai did an amazing concept of how this could look like and work like with swipeable apps when multitasking. And this is also something that Apple would be improving. Yes, the multitasking UI on the iPad is also getting a redo. And speaking of redo, the iPad will also be getting some brand new gestures as well. You guessed it for undoing and redoing. Finally, so by tapping with three fingers on the screen and then swiping left or right, uh, you would be able to scroll through your history since at the moment you actually have to shake your iPad or your iPhone to undo anything, which in my opinion is one of the worst UI designs of the history. So yeah, I cannot wait for the new undo and redo gestures. And then also something quite big when it comes to the iPad and iOS 13 uh, would finally be the ability to use a monitor in extended mode rather than just uh, mirrored mode like you can now. Also 16 by 9 aspect ratio supported rather than just the 4 by 3 that we currently have now. And then also the ability to use proper USB Type-C accessories because at the moment if you want to connect a hard drive 
well, it just won't work. So that's said to be fixed and improved USB Type-C accessories for the iPad, especially the Pro in OS 13. Well, just the Pro. Now, there's going to be a brand new sleep mode, according to Mark Gurman. Uh, that would be basically an upgraded version of the bedtime tab in the clock app, and it would enable Do Not Disturb, it would darken the lock screen, and even turn on dark mode. So, yeah, this could be integrated in the future, by the way, with the Apple Watch Series 5, or when a new version of the Apple Watch would support actual sleep tracking. So you'd be able to see sleep tracking from your watch in that specific tab of the clock app on your iPhone. And of course that there are also some brand new emojis coming just like in pretty much every new version of iOS. So there we go. These are the main features, at least the ones that we know about when it comes to iOS 13. Okay, so now which devices is iOS 13 going to work on? Well, we've actually had this report from French website iPhone Soft uh, back in early May uh, that stated that iOS 13 will only be supported on the iPhone 6s models and onwards. So it would drop support for the iPhone 5s, the iPhone 6, the iPhone 6 Plus, as well as the iPhone SE. And realistically, I, I don't see this report being fully correct. And that's only because Apple has recently released, yes, the seventh generation iPod Touch. It's out, and we're actually giving one of them away, like I said before at the beginning of this video. But that one comes with a four inch display, same as the iPhone SE. And if the iPhone success is also supported, that comes with the Apple A9 processor that's you know also inside the iPhone SE, um, then the iPhone SE has both a supported processor as well as a supported resolution. So I believe that Apple will be dropping support for all Apple A7 devices. So iPhone 5S, iPad Air 1, iPad Mini 2 and 3, uh, and they could, not 100% confirmed, but it could also be dropping support for Apple A8 devices. So iPhone 6, iPhone 6 Plus, uh, the iPad Air 2, and the iPad Mini 4. Personally, I think it's just going to be A7 devices that are being dropped out, but we'll find out literally tomorrow. So yeah, WWC happening tomorrow. Again, check out our full video on seven things to expect. Uh, tomorrow is also when iOS 13 beta would launch. So yeah, I can start saying goodbye to my iPhone XS Max because yes, I'm going to install the beta and it's going to be really laggy and unstable for a few weeks. So um, yeah. And like I said before, if you want to win an iPod that 7 gen, just be a follower on Instagram, as an off tag, and leave a comment on this post saying which model, why do you want to win and which model, which color you want to get. And I'll be announcing the winner on July the 1st via Instagram story and DM. And yeah, that's, this is pretty much it. Let me know in the comments, uh, what do you guys want to see in iOS 13? What's on your wish list? Uh, give this video a like if you enjoyed it to let me know and definitely subscribe notifications if you're new to the channel and you want to see more videos like this one thank you for watching i'm daniel and yes i'll see you guys pretty much tomorrow not at the event because uh fortunately i wasn't invited but we'll be doing a video after the event covering everything that apple has announced so yeah thank you for watching i'm daniel and I'll see you guys tomorrow so okay signing out cheers